Narco Neverland, Unlocked Up Abroad will premiere on the National Geographic channel October 5th at 7 p.m. You can also follow us on all social media platforms, Wrong to Strong. For donations to the ministry or public speaking events, please go to www.wrongstrong.com. Now let me tell you a story about Jesus. Let's get into this video. Cartel got me working for the big faces Federale got my car full of brick cases Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking Eyes picked to my back for my shoelaces God out, shoulda seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six time failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to get back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never... What's up guys, my name is JC, I am Wrong and Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my team, mi familia, mi raza, you already know what time it is. Suerte la suburba, cause we about to take a ride. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Wrong and Strong. You know what time it is. It is all in your name, all in your glory. Thank you Jesus for what you did on the cross for me. So I made it a point that I was gonna do a little series of videos about the Mexican prison stay or resort that I was at <laughs> when I was over there because of the show premiering on Wednesday. There was a lot of stuff in there <laughs> that you just couldn't understand, but I think we, we don't understand it because we don't know how made we have it sometimes because we haven't experienced it this is why i absolutely love that i grew up here in the u.s you know yeah we have our issues everybody does <laughs> everybody does everybody you know there's racism there's this there's that there's privilege there's all this stuff but at the end of the day however you look at it you know this country is is the land of dreams like cinderella stories this is the land of opportunities and i think uh we need to start praying more for it and, and just just knowing how blessed we are all right guys sorry about that <laughs> in mexico i got bad into uh, crack cocaine i i couldn't put it down as much as i tried you know god had to intervene in my life <laughs> because it was falling apart you know, and it's funny now that I, I think back now all the times that I used to think that it was me that got me out or that I was lucky or that I was just untouchable, the, the Teflon man. And now that I am calm and, and I have, you know, this this peace in me, I look back at my life and I'm like, wow, God was always working in my life. Like he was protecting me in times that most most would have been gone. It wasn't my time. There was a purpose in my life. And I just kept picking door B, you know, instead of A. <laughs> I can't say that I would go back and change anything because it just it made me the man that I am today. I, I find it a blessing that I cry just thinking about my past, how lost and how much pain I was carrying around, knowing that now, like, I didn't have to carry that. Like, it, it, I didn't have to live like that. So that's why my, my mission is so important. I, I just want people to know that you don't have to live like that. You can turn your life over today to, to God and confess your sins and, and all. And I know it sounds like a bunch of, like, voodoo and all this stuff. And, and that's, that's what makes it even more crazy because once you do do it and you're like, wow, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I give my life to Jesus sooner? Your time will be your time. But man, I wouldn't change this for nothing. All right, let's get back into the story. <laughs> so when I was really addicted to, to crack cocaine, I pretty much lost everything. 
I started selling everything in my cell. Like, uh, you know, at one time I had it completely. I had a stove. Uh, I had everything, uh, a little mini fridge, um, TV, and I started selling everything. Drug addicts do, they start, I started selling everything, I started selling all my American clothes, I started selling uh, my carpet, I, I sold everything, I even sold my documents. I sold everything, everything. I even was like prostituting myself on, on visiting days, that's that's what I was doing, you know, I, I'm not proud of it. I have to tell my story as, as as honest and real as, as it is, so people could understand. You know, there was there was a lot of people in there that had a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money. And so you have these these big narcos, this money, and they're bored. They would put soccer teams together, uniforms, get them trained, feed them through the whole process. Like they would spend big money because they would make a sport out of it. But it always turned bad. Everybody got stabbed. <laughs> It never, it never ended well. <laughs> and they, they started doing sprint races, like the Olympics. <laughs> I think the Olympics were on TV. So they started doing sprint races. Uh, it was a 50 yard sprint. And they had people on wheelchairs, people on crutches. I mean, anything to kill the time, right? And they were betting money and, and I, uh, I started racing because they would they would give me you know drugs every time I won, and I I kept winning and winning and, and I was the the champion there. And every time I won, I got a, a gram of cocaine. I was so skinny. I was probably about uh, 110 pounds. My waist was 29. I I was my body was eating itself from just all the drugs and not eating because. As soon as I would wake up, I would start smoking crack and just, I did whatever I had to do to pretty much survive. I cleaned rooms, I washed clothes, like all my dignity, all my pride, everything went down, like the drain, everybody would talk crap about me, make fun of me when I was walking around. Like it did something to me that, that man, it taught me to be humble. And it broke a little bit of ice off my chest. You know, I, I I have to look at my life as big. I had to go to school for a long period of time for me to learn how I am now. It, it took me a lifelong journey to get where I'm at. But that's why I like I appreciate this so much more. That's why I like <laughs> I love Jesus. Like I love God. I love what He's done in my heart, in my life, my family, my career, just everything. Like the doors just keep getting open and, and do I go through trials and yeah I go through this I'm you know I it's still a battle I still carry my cross every day I'm just so grateful that I don't feel like I did a year ago <clears throat> yeah these are happy tears <laughs> I kept winning those races. I kept winning, I kept winning. They brought this guy, <laughs> they brought a guy in from Michoacan that supposedly they like hunt like like small elks out there on their feet. They run, chase them and grab them by the tail and, and whatever. So they were, they were saying that he was fast. I was gonna finally lose because I was a champion. I was a reigning champion. <laughs> so. I, I was a little scared, I was a little scared, and, and I was like, man, and he's gonna beat me. We got to the line, and he was running barefooted, I remember, and his jeans was just rolled up. Straight like Rancherito from the rancho, you know, and, and we took off, and no, I, I smoked them. I got some speed in my legs. Uh, when I played football in high school, I was a returner, and a lot, of, a lot of people don't know a lot of things about like my past. Like when I was younger, I was in dance class. I used to dance a lot. <laughs> I went to boxing school. I went to taekwondo. You know, I, I, 
I tried pretty much everything under the sun to control the, the monster that was growing inside of me. Uh, I was damaged at a very young age, so it was, you know, from 10, 10 on up, it was kind of like just a struggle to, to make it every day because me being so young and not knowing what depression was, not knowing what uh, feeling like ashamed, just all the feelings that I had of like the stuff that happened to me, the stuff that I was doing now in my life. Um, you know, I was I was constantly sleeping around, and, and it just it it kept feeding the monster more and more because I didn't know what I was feeling. I didn't know how to express it. By the time I was 16, I had a nervous breakdown, and I had to be taken to the hospital. My whole right side of my body just numbed. And it's like the first time that I really started telling my family about what happened to me as a kid and what he was doing to me and what he had done. Uh, I got better, but after that, I started to experience a lot of death in my teenage years. A lot of my friends getting killed in front of me, their heads getting smashed open. Like It's just a lot of, a lot, a lot of death, a lot of murder. Uh, on both sides, on both sides, you know, us and them. And it got to the point where I became so numb that wakes up every day with wanting to kill somebody in, in their mind. And that's what you get up with, that target, that, that kind of feeling every day. It's not normal. You know, that's, and that's why I landed in, in prison at such a young age in Mexico, because it, it was... It was a really broken kid that was trying to find himself and was around very bad people. You know, bad people love broken kids. This is why this mission is so important for the younger kids and the older men to stay out and, and focus on true change because true change comes from inside, not the outside. Heart, so you can stop thinking the way that you used to think and start thinking in a godly manner. The prison in Mexico was it was a, it was a scary time. I had my moment where I shined pretty much like I stayed alive. I made it through through the days, through the weeks, through the months, uh, going from living really well to sharing a cell with somebody to sharing a cell with a bunch of guys. But I can't sit here and say that I, I would change anything because all those moments that were terrifying was all an experience that I hope that today will help somebody change their life from that life and find God. Because if he could fix me, he could fix anybody. My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage and remember, live for him. Catch you guys on the rebound.